Best. Hello. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another Creative Basement Podcast. Today we have a full house. I don't even remember the last time I've been in the same room with you guys. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. A long time. So uh, we got some new people here. So we got uh, Chris. Hi, Chris Knight. We got Brandon here. What's up? And uh, returning guest, Kevin. How's it going? Everybody, we should congratulate Kevin because yesterday he posted his first Instagram post. Kevin, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. learning how to use it <laughs> finally, and it featured me with that and cutting edge technology. <laughs> yeah, like, nobody uses Instagram anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, you got that professional stand there. The uh, yeah, man, the JVC GRC one. It's so useful. Video, audio. Have you done a everything. tutorial on that yet? I did a review on it and a vlog, so I kind of want to plug everything together with three videos. So this podcast, the review. And the uh, you still have the manual for that? It's online. I could download it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, just nice. like an '83, you go online and download the manual. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't have dial-up back then. <laughs> so yeah, we're uh, I guess we call ourselves like an old crew, been uh, mm-hmm. known of each other for a, a long time, been friends, right? Yeah, back um, when we all wanted to be filmmakers. You know, it's <laughs> funny. I think we all came together because we were filmmakers. That's exactly. how we became friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Definitely, um, I, we met Kevin because he was a filmmaker, and then I introduced Chris to all you guys because he was a filmmaker. <laughs> yeah, and have we made a? Well, how did we, so <clears throat> when we met back in middle school middle or school, whatever? Yeah, you just randomly drew me a map, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what He's do you like, mean? This is where I live, down the street. It's like <laughs> a little treasure know. map. <laughs> do you still have that map? <laughs> it probably yep. somewhere. <laughs> That'd be awesome. If you come here, I'll be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, so here's how it happened. So. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really do movie stuff like back, you know, we're talking middle school. We're not making like YouTube videos or movies, you know, yeah. we're talking about movies like as a 12 year old, we consider these movies. Mm-hmm. So Which I just we filmed, thought were amazing. Yeah. At that time. I now still looking think they're back, pretty good. Yeah. I want to watch them again. I like the one you did here with the pasta and you guys both got the shits. Oh, the prank. <laughs> <laughs> the prank. You're that saying that was right. the best one we've made? No, I'm just saying I, I, that's the first one I saw. Well, you, you guys, guys, you guys preempted me when you first showed me these. Like, this is going to be really bad. And then I watched it. I'm like, eh, it's pretty good. I mean, <laughs> I watched a low. I watched a lot of like low budget horror movies by low budget, uh, up to like ten million dollars. That was, and f- they're pretty bad. But your movies were like not worse. It wasn't worse than. And it's funny we're bit. talking kids with like a little handy cam. Yeah, when you thing. factor in age, if you if you d- do the curve for the age. Like, if professionals are making it pretty bad and you're at that same bad level, yeah. that's really good <laughs> that's really for good. a 12-year-old. Yeah, great. So, that's awesome. Believe it or not, that was your father's first how-to, how-to-cook oh, video. Oh, yo, you're right. That was his first video. Oh, yeah. That is yeah. real funny. We filmed yeah. that that same night, wasn't and the, it? And the first shot was him making pasta, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Just stirring it. Like, like, let's yeah. just make a, a funny <laughs> video out of this. And Oh, God. I don't... I got to find that. I don't you even know what it is. should post that on, uh, on his YouTube. I, I think you should. Yeah. I'd probably lose all his followers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or gain I, a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to go back. So... Uh, like we we're, I mentioned this camera here before. This takes a mini VHS tape, uh, VHSC. So back then you didn't, you know, there's no SD cards. So you didn't record to an SD card. You'd record to tape. And we had these adapters. You stick it into a VCR so you could watch it on your TV, right? Yep. So editing. Got to have two VCRs. Did... Yep. Got to have two VCRs. <laughs> <laughs> dual. Back and yep. Forth. Play, record, you cut. You were good at that, Jeremy. Yeah. Well. Th- you taught me a new thing when we first met to do movies because you did movies before, way before I did. Yeah. Like, and then you show me how you do, how you did your editing. You shot it <laughs> as an edit, yeah. right? That's how I would do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I first started. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you film like the person come in, and then you're like, "All right, stop, stay and stop," and then you get a close up of their yeah. like feet walking or whatever. Then you run a mile to yeah. shoot the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> then you come back to the first thing. I don't think I've ever seen any of your, your movies before oh, the man. ones with Jeremy. You did ones with, like sure. with your sister, right? And cousins. Yeah, Actually, well, maybe I, I did. did one video where I acted like the crocodile hunter. I mean, um, and uh, but it was with bugs. Steve Irwin. <laughs> you Steve Irwin? Yeah. It was with bugs in my backyard with my sister. And Insect then, uh, version. <laughs> what's that one uh, movie with the... Uh, Person's upstairs. The babysitter is home, babysitting, and the person calls from upstairs. What, what what was that? Scream? No, that wasn't Scream. No, um, I forgot what that was called. But that was my first video I made. So you like recreate? Tried to recreate yeah. something or do something similar? Yeah, where the killer was actually in the house, 
and he kept calling the house. So he was in the house. Oh, so oh, I forgot what that was. Is that called. when a stranger calls? Yes, oh. that's it. Yeah, when a stranger calls. So what was it like filming that? Like, do you remember the some of the details? I know it was a while back, but oh, well, my cousin Jen was the main actress. Uh, my sister was in it, and just watching it, I just oh, it was so bad. Just watching it now, <laughs> then I thought it was amazing. I'm oh, like, yeah. oh my god. Well, I think the 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 biggest lesson filmmaker wise for me was probably. And this goes for any field. If you always compare yourself to the best of the best. So like when you're a kid, you're watching whatever Academy Award winning movie. You're like, oh, that's that's a good movie. And then you make your movie and you're like, well, it's not as good as that. And you don't even factor the, in the fact that you don't have a hundred million dollars or yeah. actors that have been trained for dozens of years you make do with yeah. what you or got, the though. time or the resources or even the experience before making that movie. Like mm-hmm. everybody always wants to compare to their favorite movie. And I did this for action movies too. Like, I'm comparing it to to people that have been in the industry for like 20 years before they made that movie. Yeah. Like yeah, if you yeah. really watch everybody's first movie, it's usually not too good. <laughs> and the first ones, some of them are oh. even hard to get. Like if you look at like even big time directors, their very very first movie, oh, yeah, yeah. either in film school, some of them had one before film school or the year after. Like still it's trying to figure shit out themselves. Really? So. Yeah. They're they're usually not too good. Yeah. Um, but everybody always compares it to the best. And I think we're all kind of guilty of that when when oh, yeah. we get started. But for any people out there, if you're just getting started, you, you should probably keep that all in mind to make it fair. Because yeah. otherwise, like you're you're so yeah. critical unnecessarily. Yeah, because like, with time you get better. Like yeah, the more you, you do it, doing it. But yeah. if you you kind of watch other, I'm just comparing this to like say YouTube people. Uh, so if you, if you watch your favorite YouTuber and they're doing something way better than you like i don't know whether they travel every day or they make sick edits like one day you could get to that point but you shouldn't compare yourself or limit yourself because you're not at that point yet so it's always just uh you know keep going and just getting better and better if you enjoy it and the the other thing not not to be a little bit negative but there (laughs) there's people out there that pretend like their first edit or their first whatever is really their first but it's actually not their first. I've known a number of people like that. They claim like, well, this is my this is my first project. And then you find out later they, they've been doing it for like 10 years. They yeah. just yep. didn't know about like nobody knew about it. And then they came out with the big one like, oh, we're going to launch ourselves now and pretend this is the first one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's actually famous filmmakers who have done that, too. And then years later, it's like this movie discovered by <laughs> like yeah, this yeah. was made 10 years prior. So now they had experience and then 10 years to plan the next one, which they know. But nobody, t- you know, they didn't tell anybody about. So yeah. it's like. You should, you know, keep that all in mind because it's so easy to say, oh, your movie's not good or your project's not good. Given the amount of time, money, resources, experience you have, it's probably pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Stay persistent, you know. I always used to pretend that everything I did sucked. So I would try to be better on the next one and the next one and the next one and then... I kind of sunk into this thing where I think everything I do now sucks. So oh, no. I was kind of almost the opposite where I wanted everything to be so perfect. I didn't really get to do the next one because yeah. I was still busy planning. A lot of my shit did suck though. Paralysis by no, analysis. Dude, just going back to like uh, back then, <clears throat> dude, like I think it was the most amazing thing we ever did. Like uh, back at that time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you always took shit and made it look great. Yeah. The, your, you, editing, your editing yeah. skills well, were... Yeah, it was all right. But I, I always... Besides this little circle, I was involved with another circle of filmmakers, and I was critiqued like a motherfucker by so many people that you know went to film school and they're like, "Oh, I've been in film school for four years and all this shit," and it it just I don't know. I just really hated everything. So do, I did. Does that did that does that help or does that make it kind of discouraging? Discouraging. Or? It was. Uh, you should yeah. have talked to me about it. I went to film school. I graduated with film school with honors, and I'll tell you, film school doesn't mean anything. It means like, nothing. Um, Don't. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could, if you <clears throat> do go to film school, like I went to film school out in L.A., so my teachers were actually industry profess- professionals involved in making movies as opposed to the people that just went to teach and didn't do it. Yeah. Like yeah. that was one of my main criteria in selecting a film school. And I mean, you do learn a lot, but that doesn't make that knowledge better than someone who spends a lot of time studying. Like if you didn't, if you never watched any movies and you didn't read anything Mm -hmm. about filmmaking, Mm -hmm. then yes, someone in film school would be way better than you. Mm -hmm. But if you're a serious filmmaker and you're doing it all the time, like you can pick up like tips and tricks that someone in film school wouldn't know. 
Yeah, so like no, you could actually be farther ahead. And then, like I said, like like and and just as a question because you didn't tell me that before, but what were they doing that was so great? Like were they putting out really good stuff? Or? They were more more. Um, it wasn't really good. They just knew better people, um, and they uh, they had more money than I did. They had you know better lights. So it was just more like, of a polished product. Yeah, more of a polished. That was because ar- like artistry is like subjective. Yeah. So like yeah, you know. Yeah, it's back to the but back to the film school thing though is I I really don't believe in film school too much because they kind of just teach the business aspect of it. They don't teach the art. They don't teach getting that camera eye. That, yeah, like I mean, I know tons of people that took ten years in film school. They get out and their shit still it just. It's like you what like you go to like photography school first and you know get that eye first. Get that like you know because I found out. Well, I think it's it's hard to tell because certain people. Like if they're just not to say not good at it, but sometimes they're pursuing genres that they're not quite mm-hmm. as good at. Like if they just switch genres, they could be really good. But for whatever yeah. reason, they're tied to a genre. If they didn't go to film school, they might have been even worse. Like it's hard to say, you know. Yeah. So no, like, but yeah, certain people like the film they're... school doesn't make the difference. Yeah. So, like for yeah. me, I think it's more of like uh, like film or anything that has to do with the camera is like a creative process. Yeah. So as long as your idea is awesome and you're able to tell that story well. Even if you don't have like lights or the best camera, mm. if you have that idea and you know how to present it well, I think that's what matters most. That's and one thing that the film school does teach is like the basic Hollywood structure. Uh, what is it? Um, bite body tail, or uh, then there's uh, five uh ohs, five oh shits, and one oh my god. <laughs> you write that into a story, and that's pretty much what every single Hollywood movie is the same pattern. Yeah, over and over. like a story structure, like a yeah, it's just a basic story structure. But the Hollywood one is it's so funny because in the know, first day of film school, they they tell you, okay, well, there's no rules in filmmaking. Okay, now you got to learn this. Here's the test. Here's the rules. <laughs> here's the rules. One eighty degree rule. <laughs> You're talking about that. Yeah, we were... <laughs> rules are meant to be broken. Yes, like. But I mean, if you have, I mean, I, I think film school, especially before the internet, was useful for people. I, it's kind of like it's kind of like regular college. There's certain people that just if you're not sure what you want to do or you're not quite motivated, mm-hmm. school can give you that push in the structure. So it almost <clears throat> depends on your personality type whether or not film school yeah. would benefit you or not. So like that's the differ- differentiating factor is your personality type and what you want to do, not the school itself. But yeah. I mean, I did I didn't yeah, learn yeah. a lot I wouldn't have learned otherwise. And for people that think they might want to do industry filmmaking, it's completely different than indie filmmaking. So, like, yeah. that's a big thing to kind of uh, figure out what you want to do. Because especially before the internet got big, like 10, 20 years ago even, your film school was be- a better option. Yeah, <laughs> now yeah. it's almost like you can learn it all online for YouTube. free. Yeah. So unless you're really, really, really <clears throat> lazy or, I mean – yeah, everybody's got their own experience. Like, I got a lot out of it, but by no means would I say it was required in any way. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Like, if you, specifically, like, with your with your horror films, <coughs> I'm not sure film school would have made them better. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, like, you knew, if you knew what you wanted to get, and you got it, like, the practice would make you better. Not yeah, I needed a lot of help in the story structures, though. It, my, the body of my stories always sucked. Well, if you ever but, wanted your movie to like exceed to like Hollywood, you know, to be on in theaters, do you think you needed that uh, schooling? That wouldn't have. <clears throat> I mean, it also depends once again on personality type. Like, if you're into directing, and nobody's gonna let you direct a movie right away. Yeah. So, if you're doing the industry system, you're at the mercy of producers and studio executives, all these people that are g- gonna blame you when it goes wrong, <laughs> and take the credit if it's yeah. good. So it's almost like you're almost in a no-win position mm. as a starting director unless you know people already and you're going to get a bigger budget. Yes. But for even for theaters like you can if you have a really good indie film you're getting into theaters. You don't yeah. need you don't need Hollywood. And right now like theaters are kind of down anyway. Everything's online. So yeah. it's as almost a, like <clears throat> as like an indie creator at this point in time with the internet being so crazy and big, like is it as exciting now if you, I mean I guess you would want to sell it to Hollywood if it's possible because you'd probably make a ton of dough, but not necessarily. Not, yeah, not necessarily. No, no. It's... Okay, so I'm wrong on that. But for me, like, I don't know. I'd want to like just release it online and maybe do a video, a VOD or like a video on demand, charge three bucks or whatever. To They're watch. not going to use your movie first off. They're going to scrap the whole thing. Take the not the idea, but they're either going to recast it 
and that's if you give up directorial rights. So you have so you have to sell your script, and then you also have to. Well, the way I was taught is write your script three different ways to cover your ass so they can't steal the ideas, <laughs> and then <laughs> with different outcomes. So and then and then um, copyright the treatment too, and then don't give up directorial rights because once you do that, you're, you're missing out on a shit ton of money, mm. and you don't get to pick who's to cast it in it anymore, and and you know and. So really, yeah, it they always dump the movie anyway. Once in a while, you get like an indie thing that might pick up your whole thing, but yeah. usually they recast and reshoot. But just going back to that, so we have that opportunity now to be in control and not have to rely on going and trying to sell mm-hmm. our idea. If you have you know a great story or a documentary that you want to sell, you could do it yeah. all on your own, right? So just going back to uh, editing back in the day with these tapes. So you and Kevin, they both had. I remember we actually that. talked about it a little. I think you were asking me how I did it. Yeah, I didn't get. I don't get how you do that. Like, how yeah. do you edit with two VCRs? Like, and you, so you find re- all the footage on one and yeah. Get it so ready you play for you play oh. the segment that you want and you click record on the second one. Then as soon as you don't want the shot anymore, you click stop on that one and then go to the yeah. next. So spot what if you, you screw up? Because VCRs are not that great. So what if you, you just have to keep doing it until you learn because you have your master. It. You have your master tape and then you have the tape that you're recording from the master so if you mess up you just rewind <laughs> and play and record it again <laughs> i had to do again. that a bunch like sometimes oh, i would edit all night i would hit pause and then record and yeah stop. i remember yeah. yes I oh remember pause makes that. sense yeah okay yeah. Yeah. yeah but there would still be that little little tiny, lag part yeah yeah that <laughs> tiny little interference like, well, i'm not gonna go there <laughs> Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, we uh, Jeremy and I were just talking about this yesterday. Like we thought the quality was good because we had never seen HD or 4K. Yeah, yeah. So at the time, like VHS, call, that's what's interesting. Like at the time, the quality seemed really good. So I'm trying to think now. Like movie theaters back then, what was the quality? Is it how it is now? It was, or was a lot it better because really, it, was, really it wasn't digital. So yeah, it was f- whatever four to eight K is the estimate. I'm actually a back film then person, years ago. Though. I'm still. I want I like film better. The look I'm like um yep. Quentin Tarantino. Like I he won't shoot on anything. He won't shoot on the red ones, nothing. Gotta be film. Although it's hard to come by to film and it's so expensive now, but <laughs> there's some there's some I don't know if you've checked out <clears throat> that I think the plugin is actually called Film Convert. Film Convert. And it's really good. Is it like, like better I'm than so skeptical. Twenty three. Like 20. I was so skeptical because nothing really looks like film. Yeah. This plugin's good. Like what it, is it? A filter? Much, to put all the yeah, it's in? a plugin for for. Well, I use it for Premiere. I think it's for you can get it. For so Final you Cut. have to shoot it in twenty four frames a second. No, you can put convert the filter. It. The filter just makes it look like the film stock. Like there's a lot of film stock filters, okay. but I believe Film Convert Pro possibly is the name, and it looks exactly like film. I got so many of those plugins. I had yeah, the, most uh, of them Magic Bullet. Yeah, um, well, the Film Convert one is really good. Film Convert, really good. <laughs> oh. I remember Check Magic Bullet had a uh, a plugin way back before uh, HD was you know you could use <clears> HD <throat> and they had like an up convert feature. Yep, I saw yeah, that I on that. Video Copilot. They always had. Oh, okay. Yeah, they remember had some that? good stuff yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Love yeah. got a lot of ideas awesome. and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, it's a lot yeah. of good stuff on there. They weren't I, teaching you that in film school. No. <laughs> they they taught me how to do the um uh the Matrix spin around thing with just one camera. It was. You know, you just tell the guy to run, stop, and then just when he stops, you move the camera. How many times did you do around. that? I don't remember seeing that. I did that, you did that a, a lot of the times? movies, and didn't I didn't upload anything. Uh, I didn't have okay. a YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I did I think one with him? <clears throat> Another one with this other kid, uh, Matt. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It was it was, it was really cool. The there. other big technological kind of revolution is gimbals because. Way back when, you needed like a ten, twenty thousand dollars steady cam to get yeah. the kind of shots you can get now, built in stabilization and like I know. a GoPro. I, I still have my uh, uh, HD two thousand cam. Yeah, two thousand glide cam. I think 2000. I still, I still, think I still I have use that it. one too. I, I <laughs> haven't upgraded that? a lot. I got yeah. some uh, gimbals if you want to buy some electronic ones. Yeah, all right, I'll buy them off. You. <laughs> Well, all the new uh, cams are coming out with that built in. Yeah, like that five little... axis stabilization built They're into awesome. the body, and so. Yeah, technology's come so such a long way. It's almost like it's so quick too. It's so like it, everybody shooting video now, like they got it pretty good. Yeah, they, they got, yeah, <laughs> they, got they didn't have good. to figure it out. I used to make all my equipment, my sliders and oh, stuff yeah, out of wheels. I remember, yeah, 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 yeah. I still got my jib, my big giant. I jib. made a gimbal back in the day with like some pipes and some yeah, washers I that. that too. Yeah, and a twenty pound weight at the bottom. It actually worked. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't that bad, but wow. <laughs> 
If you have money, just buy it. Nowadays, you go out there and you're like, what the hell's that thing you're using? <laughs> like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, after VHS, I didn't edit with VHS too long because then Adobe Premiere came out. I think Adobe Premiere 1.5 is the first one I got. It came with a new computer. And so I got that. Oh, and I remember like, that. Oh, wow. You, you can edit with software. <laughs> but you can get the exact frame yeah, exactly. with, no, with no noise from no the VCR. VCR like TV. <laughs> so you're talking now mini DV now, right? Yeah. Not mm-hmm. VHS, mini DV The tapes. mini DV revolution. Once in a while, you get those pixelated tapes yeah. once in a while. Yes. Always on the best yep. fucking parts. Yep. Too, or like a little it. skip. Yes. But so that's that why I would always spend the money and get the, premi- the premium ones. Yeah, it usually I, didn't happen with the premium yeah. ones. I don't even remember. And then when like HD happened, I actually had the first. It was called Prosumer HD camera. It was a, so, I think it was a Sony HDR, and it was Mini DV HDV. So it was still interlaced. So it was, uh, it wasn't 1920 by 1080. It was 1440 by 1080. That's what this is. Interlaced right? wow. HD DVD. My yeah. first HD camera, 2007, 2007. Damn. I think it was. I remember that. Thing. 1200 Did you bucks. Film anything with that? I filmed so much stuff. Yeah, with this. yeah. not recently, you probably film but... more with that than any camera, right? Yeah, <laughs> filming like every day. I just bought one of those things for a hundred bucks yesterday on Amazon because I'm doing like <laughs> I, I need an extra camera for my um, uh, paranormal stuff I do. You're doing. <clears throat> you're going to do a podcast on that too, right? Well, uh, yeah. Paranormal? Well, I'm doing a show. It's going to be a YouTube show and seasons and everything, and then we're doing podcasts for every individual uh, investigation we do. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. That is cool. What's your current investigation? Right now, I'm probably going to go back to St. Augustine, uh, the lighthouse. Oh, in Florida? Yeah. Yeah, I've been there. We just went to Savannah, cool. Georgia, and, and yeah, St. Augustine, cool but we too. didn't get into the lighthouse. So I'll let you borrow that camera if you want to use it. Uh, you know what? You can keep that. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? I don't think I need a paperweight. Well. <laughs> Works flawlessly, actually. It has Zoom, too. It's a Zoom great mic holder, good. too. <laughs> yeah. Well, it even has like a remote. You can add a re- wireless remote. Yeah, everything. it's some wow. accessories. 1983. 84. 84. Watson was gonna steal so you that. could actually attach a character creator or generator on top of it and plug it in, and you could put text, overlay text on the tape. Yeah, no. In the, within the camera. I'm really good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, yeah, we, <clears throat> we shot a ton of content with like the mini DV tapes. We did a lot of stuff with that, and then we yeah. Yeah. video edit in a Premiere or... You used a bunch of other editing software. I use too, Sony right? Vegas. I've been using it for shit like fifteen years. Sony Vegas. Were you the one? There was another one, another editing program that you used. What did you use before that? I messed something with Avid with a little o. bit. Something uh, with an O. There was o. another program. Never used an O. What was it's the other good. one? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh. <clears throat> I don't know. The other famous one, other than Vegas, so not the main ones. It was so it's like Final Cut Pro, Premiere, oh, yeah. Avid, yeah, Final Cut, and then then Premiere. there was Vegas, and then there was another one. I never used that one. I thought was it you? Was it iMovie or some shit? I I mo- <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, oh something movie. with an O. Oh. No. <laughs> I, I don't know. It was that. not me. Maybe though. it'll I'll pop into your head later. I tried that Windows Movie Maker, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Fuck this horse shit." I <laughs> used that, dude. I used that because I didn't have that. Premiere. I didn't have <clears throat> Premiere like when I started, so I used that to just make random. I just stuff. have iMovie. Premiere, yeah. When Premiere first came out, it was like revolutionary. I remember doing like really cheapo movies. And we put in, we overlaid explosions, and it looked really good, like for the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How'd you key that out? So I don't even remember exactly. It was an overlay. So I would actually take a real movie explosion, like a Hollywood film. Yeah. I would get that explosion <clears throat> clip, and I would overlay it and just tweak the uh, the background. I don't even remember exactly yeah, how you do got it. the so, rights to that, or <laughs> it was just the explosion part. <laughs> Great, you just fucked them up. <laughs> well, I didn't. Well, I didn't sell the movie. I didn't sell the movie. So, and I didn't show it anywhere. So it was one of our use. movies you used, right? Yeah, it was per- personal use. I thought you used so. After Effects a lot. No, I never got a little bit, but oh, not really. Yeah. I I did almost everything in Premiere. Premiere's like yeah, I know you can do most things stuff. in Premiere. Every once in a while, I'd have to do something in After Effects quick, but I just really liked Premiere because it was faster. Yeah. And you'd have to deal with importing, exporting. Although now it's like seamless. You can just <clears> throw yeah. it over. But uh, yeah, and I don't remember. I, I don't even remember how I got the background out of there. But I just overlaid an explosion. You probably broken. did the chroma key. Chroma probably. Key, I don't yeah. even remember. That, that's I how I, I did it back then. But it yeah. got rid of the background. So it was just a big explosion that I put <laughs> on my film. And it looked real good <laughs> at the time. Yeah. At the time. I remember so. one of the major challenges was we couldn't. We sh- we shot HD with these things, but we couldn't uh, burn 
HD onto DVDs. Yeah. Like, that was like yeah. a yeah. problem, and I'd never Why understood. was that? You needed like a Blu-ray. It was a different <laughs> format. Not, it wasn't recording. out yet, so yeah. we had no yeah. options because HD came out so much more. Just kind of like 4K, too, except now everything's online. Yeah. So if there was no online, how would you watch 4K before 4K Blu-ray came out? Yeah. And yeah. how long did it take to come out? Like a couple of years. You'd have a year, a couple of years worth of content. Nobody had the TVs or anything either. You couldn't, Monitors. yeah, true. So it was a couple of years behind. And I remember, even, even now, like if you get some of those 6K cameras, how do you watch the footage? Like there have been 6K yeah, cameras, really, cameras out for how long? They push out the yeah. technology so much, but then you can't really yeah. use them yet. I remember uh, Brandon, he got an HD camera, but it was... It sh- it yeah. recorded to a DVD though. Yeah, and oh, it was I like a mini DVD, it was a weird codec. It was a mini DVD. Yeah, and I could yeah. not do anything. A V C H D. When yeah. that first ABCHD. came out, that was yeah. ahead of its time. That was like yeah, ahead of its time, and it died before it even came that's, out. <laughs> I well, it's actually it's still, movies it's still because of that. Now. <laughs> really, and I just became yeah. an actor, and that's I it. Never, yeah, seriously, you're like, it was because of that camera. I stopped making movies. I was so frustrated. I don't. That was so tough to work with. Like to get that to the computer to do editing. Like that was tough. He had like plug in the camera itself, right and. The other uh, thing that's like USB. revolutionary, that new Black Magic camera that's is it out yet or it's coming out? And that that can shoot Every time raw, I check it says like that next can month. Shoot, that could shoot raw or their own proprietary raw if it's not real raw, close mm-hmm. enough. Uh and that's how much does that camera cost? Twelve ninety five. Yeah. So no back lines, back when we first started shooting, <laughs> you'd have to spend over a hundred thousand dollars to get anything yeah. like not even not even four K, just regular res. That would shoot raw or with that kind of high dynamic range, and now you can get it for like less than two grand. <laughs> so it's it's kind of crazy Some how far techno- are... how far technology has come along. Yeah, I shot on the Red One in the city a couple times and the Scarlet. That thing, man. It's did you a little ha- box? Did you know it's... how to use it no. prior? Or... Well, I didn't. I when I started doing like the stuff in in the city and stuff, which was just like a freelance camera operator, it um. I didn't realize that I'm not even allowed to touch the lens or turn the camera on. I just I'm just a camera operator that holds it wow. and then somebody else turns it off. Like all these really? unions, all these like That's yeah. crazy. And you know, they're getting a deal with me because I'm just you know, holding the damn so thing. So you're holding it on a like a right? gimbal or like what No, like holding? either a shoulder rig. Yeah, I mean in uh, film school I've done the some, camera guy does everything. Well, they work summer. together. Well, that's but, uh, film school, but there's usually one guy. Like, job where that's what. I, uh, back to the uh, film school thing is that's what I learned when I took my courses when I was all done was now you have to figure out what you want to do and we're like, what do you mean we all want to be filmmakers? Okay, what does that consist of? <laughs> When's the last time you shot on film? Never. So <laughs> stop yeah. calling yourself a filmmaker yeah. first off. But um, yeah, I didn't realize that like the focus puller just does the focus and then the lens person's in charge of the lenses and then somebody turns the camera on and off and somebody's the camera operator and then there's the the grip and like they're all different unions that can't touch each other's shit. It's crazy. I didn't know that. You can't even look at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a matte box guy too. He does just a matte box. <laughs> <laughs> just just, look at it. just on, imagine right? how long it would take to set up this it, uh, podcast studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You got like three I wires. I plugged the mics in. Three different people. <laughs> yeah. We actually, I, I just saw them shooting um, in Georgia uh, uh, a Disney movie that they're shooting right now, um, Lady and the Tramp. And we, I was seeing that going on where the camera operator, he, he would take it, take the camera and give it to somebody else and then they turn it off and it was like, <laughs> this is so stupid. Too many weird. steps. Yeah. 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 It's so much funner just doing it with friends. I know. Like like originally before, I always thought like if we all worked together, all four of us, which we never did, I think on one movie, I think we would have made like the best movie, yeah. you know. Well, that's we were talking about that. The hardest part, <clears throat> scheduling. Like, yeah. Yeah. You could have the best idea, yep. the best equipment, mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you can't get the schedule if, together, you're never gonna actually and you never get can to get the, shoot. You it. and I were always working at Shoprite yeah. all the time, and then. You were doing your computer fixing thing, whatever, all over yeah. the goddamn country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hated it. And you that. were in California shooting on mountains and stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which was a really good movie. <laughs> I like that, man. We were actually we actually used it was funny. We used the Canon XL one, yep. I believe. Yeah. But it was at film school and we actually had these like twenty thousand dollar Panavision lenses. That we mm. mounted onto the yep. cheapo, excellent. It looked yeah, amazing. Yeah, they make those shoes. It looked yeah, amazing, but it was just funny because they're like, "We don't care if you break the camera, just don't do. It. Don't <laughs> make lens, sure the lens doesn't." Are... <laughs> like, like why didn't they? I mean, well, I guess that was the best, easiest camera to use at the time. What, what did that the, shoot to? Like in the early two thousands, what was that? What, what did it shoot to? What was the medium? The XL one. It was just XL one was just DV, right. 
mini DV, but it, it was the first camera that had 24p. Yeah. Oh, one of the first cameras had 24p, yeah. you know, 23.976. So, so most of those cameras yeah. were 30 frames a second, right? 2997. 2997. Yeah. yeah. But 24p was hard to come by. That for, was very hard to come by. Pro- yeah. yeah, progressive. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I always wanted that camera too. And that's actually when I learned that the let. Well, I, I, I learned a lot in film school, but. Also, at that time, like before YouTube, <laughs> before the internet is big, you can't, it's hard to know what you don't know. Now you can just go on a YouTube video, they'll give you a quick rundown of everything you yeah. need to know. Oh, so man. then you know what you need to look up, which you wouldn't have known yeah. otherwise. Yes. So, and with any, with any subject. So. Or dinosaurs here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had rotary phones. <laughs> <laughs> I still got one. <laughs> yeah. Can you still use it? No. Can you send text on it? Or? Nah, no text on that. I actually still but, do the film stuff, but I'm just, I just shoot music videos in the city now. Like, no three. Like don't, they don't need any three hundred and sixty videos. Not really. No. no. <laughs> but now, Sucks. and just to, to move along with the technology, like after mm. Mini DV, then it went to actually hard drives in the camera. I didn't have one of those, but those got really popular. Yeah. And then it was the SD cards. Well, you do have that. Uh, what is it? The Atomos Shogun. Can't you attach a hard drive to? Oh that? yeah, but that's a monitor though. That's not a camera. They had the actual Sony Handycams with the hard drives and mm-hmm. all the companies were making those. And then they moved over to SD cards. And now you can get 4K on your phone and have it instantly <laughs> uploaded online. You have it so, so easy. you don't even need a computer. You don't even need to do real editing. You could have an app just tweak it how you yeah. need it. You could do it's everything crazy, in man. phone, instant. Mm-hmm. Upload. You can even stream it live. You don't it's, even have to edit it. It's you can so stream easy. It live. Anybody so could be like a filmmaker, right? <laughs> yeah. Because the tools are here, right? No it would challenges. be interesting to see the numbers on how many more filmmakers, like actual either short film or feature films, not just random videos, but people actually making fiction. I think there's a lot more people doing the random videos now, though. Just the random videos, of, yeah. yeah. I, the, the film, but I the think actual short dying films, out, though. actual short films and feature films, it would be interesting to see the numbers compared to 10 years ago, 20 mm-hmm. years ago. Well, when we went to high school, there was no film class and films. You know, no one taught yeah. that in, in high school. Now my a lot of high school cousin that. does that. A lot of she high teaches schools. film school, and they got to make their own short at the end of the year. Oh, about half the kids that went to my film school in high school, they did have film class. It's just we didn't have one. Wasn't it mixed with like the audio class too, and like radio, and they mixed it all together? It depends on the high school. Yeah. All the high schools were different. Some of them actually had yeah, they had the <laughs> AV on yeah. AV class, but yeah. then other high schools actually did have a real like film one hundred and one class. Yeah. There were even high schools out there that had like. Like even specialized, like yeah. they had a horror film class, or like <laughs> what? it's yeah. Jesus, it actually, all depends on the school. To see if you can get, you know, talk to the kids, you know, do like a three sixty thing, yeah, yeah something. <laughs> That'd be cool. What grade is that? Uh, I think it's every any grade, grade in high school. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Like they just started well, go to school now. You might get shot. Is it kind of like they... an elective? Or <laughs> what are you doing it... here? What's in that backpack? Oh, <laughs> that's not a camera. That's a gun. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> But I asked, yeah. I asked her, um, <clears throat> do any of your students go into Hollywood or go into making movies? I think most of them just go into like broadcasting. Huh. You know? yeah. I mean, it's kind of like any art. Like you got to really, really <coughs> want to do it because you want to do it. Mm-hmm. You got to know well, what you want to do too. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to do it so bad, man. We we loved it. <laughs> we just filmed so much <laughs> stuff, man. We got like Silent Night, uh, Nightmares, Morto. Uh, uh, Morto. Yep. <laughs> we had some great that. ideas, man. Just... I know. There were that part where we did um I forget who was getting well, we threw a shovel and then we like cut it real quick so it looked like the shovel went through the back. Yeah. And that was awesome. <laughs> we thought we were geniuses. Yeah. yeah. Your like... gore was pretty good. My gore? Gore. Yeah. Which one? The harder the... stuff. Some of them. I don't remember which ones I did though. <laughs> I just remember the first time I don't even remember the first time I saw you doing some gore, I was like, that was that's pretty cool. What did you have? Was you there gore and some... abnormality? Uh, yeah, with the slitting the throat and all that stuff. Whatever it was. Yeah, well, that pretty... we did the old school practical effects where you like, I had a thing had a switchblade, but we turned it up backwards so the, the sharp end was, you know, facing out. Hopefully, and then, you don't uh, mess that part up. <laughs> I had a tube running through the actor's hand up to the blade, and we were pumping blood through it with my mouth. I put blood in my mouth and I blew into it. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, and it, it just, yeah, I just had to make do with what you had. It's pretty oh, cool. Man. That's yeah. cool. Didn't you also, like, you were crafting some either prosthetics or something? Yeah, I was doing yeah. all the prosthetics yeah. and masks. Yeah. and yep. Yeah, it was a lot of, uh, I was just, yeah, pretty much doing whatever you had to do to, I was always trying to come up with a new iconic horror icon, yeah. some sort of new mask, some sort of new villain, you know. Yeah, you had really a lot of good out. masks. 
Yeah. Mm. Still have them. Damn you. Sorry. You're a professional or what? Yeah, this is your <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Diana, thanks for uh, ruining the whole podcast. Thanks, Diana. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it's just fun being creative, you know. Yeah, I think that's what was always fun about it, and just uh, telling a story with a device, something like that, yeah. where you can mm-hmm. actually replay and watch it. And just the cool thing was showing our friends, or even bringing it to school and showing and it. showing our parents. Then yeah. thinking we made such a great film, they're probably looking back at like. Wow, what are these kids making here? What is this? <laughs> That's why I was like so excited about YouTube because then you could um back then was you could share your idea with uh, the world basically. Yep. And when you're eighty, free. you can yeah, look back free. and see all your uh, yeah videos. That's a pretty bad experience, just with that though. Oh, uh, I mean, what do you, why? showing like a lot like that other circle of friends that I was telling you about. Uh, they one of the main people that I was doing it with was um, he just wanted me to stop. I don't, I, he just didn't, I don't know if it was a jealousy thing or what, but he, he would bring like all these asshole friends to watch my stuff and then just like make fun of it, critique it in front of me. And it just kind of destroyed my whole confidence. That was before you met us. That was, yeah. Oh, way before, really? Yeah. Okay. yeah, that was before we met us. I mean, there was like at least 10 kids from like film school yeah. that he brought in, you know, and this is like one of my second or third things. It was, actually, it was um, the day at the beach. They analyzed every single thing they critiqued that i wasn't wow. doing the uh the 180 degree rules like i did i didn't even know it then you can't cross so you know, what's one, funny you know? just can't, uh just can't. what's funny about that in film school everybody used to get like the professor would get on me about that and i'd be like okay well unless it's like two twins in a white room with no furniture or two ninjas you know who's who like i'm not going <laughs> to insult the audience's yeah. intelligence mm-hmm. and the world is 360 degrees mm-hmm. i'm not going to try to like just do that to make people who can't because that that rule is pretty good in like 1920 yeah. when, when film just came out you don't know what you're watching you are going to get confused like wait a second that person's on that side now they're on that side did they just switch yeah, unless yeah. you show so the transition it does yeah. it does make sense why they made that a rule when film first came out Mm-hmm. But now, are you going to get confused now watching a film? Of course not, because you know the camera moves around, so there's no reason. That's kind of like an archaic rule that doesn't really need to be followed. And it's my movie; I'll do what I want. And so, yeah, like, you know. But the, I mean, there's an old quote I always think of: if people aren't laughing at you, your dreams aren't big enough. Yeah. So, like, if you if you're not getting any criticism <clears throat> or hate, like, you're not really doing anything substantial. Because yeah. if you're just making super safe stuff that everybody's going to be like, yeah, it's all right. Like you're not gonna ever get great praise either, because you're gonna have yeah. both extremes. Like look at look at even you brought up Quentin Tarantino. I'm not the biggest fan. Like he's got so many haters and so many really g- people that support him no matter what and think he's the greatest filmmaker of all time. Yeah. So like it's like you're never gonna only have one of those. Yeah, no. I understand. So like you know <clears> when, really when like I would when much, I would so. get hate, I would I would kind of appreciate it a little bit because. Like, especially like you were saying, all the movies have to have the same story structure. Like, I like to experiment a little bit. So, like, a lot yeah. of scripts that I wrote did not follow the traditional story structure. Because if you just want to be, like, another cog in the machine, another brick in the wall. But you're the ones do that it. don't follow yeah. it usually stand out. Yeah. Like, you know, Martin For better Scorsese. or for worse. But either way, for better or for worse, at least you did something real. Mm-hmm. Like, you did something yeah. substantial and you did it your vision, own way. You know, not, yeah. So Boy. you're not going to regret that. Whereas if you just did what everybody else did and stayed safe, played by the rules, got yeah. no hate, at the end of the day, it's like, well, maybe you should have found something else to do that you were really passionate about to kind yeah. of follow all the way through. So yeah, if no, you're listening yeah, yeah. to this and you're in a similar experience as Chris had with people are picking apart all your stuff, I mean, yeah, yeah, a lot of their points could be valid, but – a lot of it could also be, like you said, jealousy or... They were like know-it-alls, like we're in school, you're not, you know. Yeah, jealousy or ego-based where they were just making stuff up. I mean, they I've kind gotten, of were. They wanted to hear themselves talk, really, but... I've gotten a ton of hate and stupid mm-hmm. comments on my YouTube videos. been doing this for a long time, obviously. Um, and I, I read this one thing that was really funny. It said... Uh, <clears throat> Haters are just confused fans. Oh yeah, I really like that. When you when you told me that, that was so interesting. That's pretty because funny. They haters take the time to like hate and energy yeah. to keep watching. But you still watch. You notice, yeah, if and you got notice, me my, like, some my of these YouTube channels play, getting though. crazy hate. 
It's yeah. the same guys coming back watching yeah. the video yeah, just, show yeah. and making it come comp. back and watching like, it though, right? Thanks for the click. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they keep coming back. Like they hate it, yep. but they yeah. keep coming back. Mm-hmm. The funny so thing really is, funny. my dad has haters. He's like eighty <laughs> years old. And people like <laughs> hating on him, like for doing the recipe. Like ah, uh, that's not how you do the recipe. Really? Yeah, and yeah. it's like so wow. funny. But like, who cares? Like, say whatever you See, want. I never like, gave a shit about likes and like everyone's like, oh, you have to tag it. You have to do this. I'm like, I really, I don't need approval from people I don't fucking know. Like, I don't care. Like, I mean, it, it depends on what your strategy. Strategy is, I mean, if you're trying to make a living off of it, yeah. You need if you're all trying to do stuff. money, or that's one thing. And yeah, because that boosts school, though. That boosts I mean, um, the the YouTube algorithm, so you get the, more viewers on your uh, yeah. videos. But basically. either way, it kind of so, depends on if you want, like, if you're really about your vision, and it's that unique, you'll have a lot less fans, but they'll be dedicated. Yeah, as opposed mm-hmm. to a lot more fair weather fans that are going to jump onto the next big thing, of later course. Anyway, so yeah. you're probably better off doing what you really want to do and following your vision regardless of what anybody else says not to be confused you can take well, their criticism not emotionally and examine if it's really critique or criticism because like some because people <clears> did <throat> when in film school they would always like dice it's almost like they expected you to say something negative so <laughs> people would just try to come up with something because that was the format like let's watch this film let's critique it well, let's tear it up so it's almost like <laughs> yeah. that's the mentality so they're like, trying to find something and i'm like well if i'm making this action film I'm following these action film rules, and that's the way it was designed. It's not like I didn't know about this or that. Sometimes I didn't, and it was helpful. Yeah. But if you kind of just don't take it so personal and just kind of view it as the person giving you the critique, that's their unique point of view. Because then it's almost it's almost like you're you're not really doing it for yourself. Yeah, You're doing it just you know for views or for well, likes have, or whatnot. Have but, you ever, ever um, sent anything to like a film festival? Or, yeah. And what, what do you do? The only film festival I submitted to was Action on Film, and I I didn't realize at the time, because I wasn't at a film school for so long. At the time, (laughs) like I was young and naive, and I thought it was really about what the best film was. I didn't understand the political undertones of all of it. So then I would look at even some of these other films that were winning the action, and it's an action film festival, so we didn't have to worry about story. It was action set pieces. So in my films, it's always... I didn't use any cheats. I didn't use wires. I didn't use green screens. We yeah, didn't even really use did mats. It. it was all real. Yep. Especially and it was really four times in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> and it was oh, uh, four, over, only four. You, know, you did that long again. It was did like, like long. Sh- it was long shots and with really intricate choreography that nobody else was doing. So I would look at these other films and they would pale in comparison. And <clears> they, I think it might have been nominated for some, but it wasn't even nominated for all of them. And then later on, I would watch. I watched the one that won. And I was just left scratching my head. I'm like, not just to me, because there was other like no names. They had mm-hmm. really good. There were a couple of really good submissions. They didn't win anything. Really? And then the the not so great stuff with name people. Like it was no A listers, but like B listers. They that's what won. This I'm like, <laughs> okay, so this is all politicized anyway. So they don't really mean it when they say, oh, this was like best choreography, best action, whatever. So. Mm. It was uh, at the time I was a little frustrated with it, but now I'm kind of it was it was a good learning experience because it, it all depends on your strategy. And I like I, I make movies for myself. Mm. So if it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell. And I actually had a couple companies that were going to take it. I had one guy who was going to take it to Cannes, actually. Mm. And then uh, they said they were doing three. They were going to take three and they wanted mine. And then that fell through and then someone else wanted it and it was like a low ball offer and it was just yeah yeah hmm. I, hear you. I had a uh, i've kind of mixed feelings about film festivals because um i was at a party actually once and there was this actress that i was talking to and i was shit talking film festivals and i didn't realize that her mother that was right <laughs> behind her was one of the main that's judges great. for garden state uh, film judge. festival that's great and they're like, why don't you submit your stuff is good and all this stuff? And I'm like, well, who the fuck are you to judge me on my art? Like, and I was just going off. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I was in a different <laughs> place, you know, when I wrote that, and then when I shot yeah. it, it was raining, so it came out like shit anyway. It wasn't yeah. the way I want. I, I envisioned it. And then you, you people don't even know me. Are gonna sit around and yeah. tell me what I did wrong? Like, yeah. fuck off, you know. So, yeah. And meanwhile, I didn't know her mother. It's like she's like, well, you're not getting my vote. <laughs> like, I'm like shit, <laughs> that sucks. So. But but that's kind yeah. of messed. That's kind of messed up. Do you want the vote of someone who said they're not going to give you your vote without seeing your project? Exactly. That's like, what, what if? Yeah. What if? What if you're not you? But if let's say you're a horrible human being, like some supposedly some A-list yeah. Hollywood directors are, 
but you have an absolutely brilliant film. Isn't the job of a judge to examine the film on its own merit? Well, so half like, of these people that actually just never shot point. a movie themselves. That just proved your point. She's not even going to vote for yeah. the film without seeing it. Like, or they went to film school and didn't name, do anything. They'll with their see career, your name so. on it. Be like, it, nope. <laughs> yeah, it. You know, I and I didn't tell her my name. Thank God. But, uh, <laughs> me, but me and Brandon had a great experience at a film festival. Are we, you really uh, going to go there? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, Too many. Okay, we uh, yeah, I mean, Brandon went to a film festival. We submitted, or we just it wasn't an official kind of thing. It was just kind of like go and show off what you've done. Yeah, your that, talent. Yeah, that your month talent. or whatever. So we showed our thing. I don't even remember what it was. And then uh, this guy just shows his movie. And <laughs> oh, keep in mind, this. there's kids here. There's like adults. <laughs> there's teenagers. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this guy is doing a film. It's not even like a film. It's like a I'd say it? like a vlog or something. Sort of, right? Yeah, almost like a vlog. Yeah. It wasn't like... <clears throat> had no story to it. No, there was no talking. I don't know. I don't remember the details of that, but the guy's filming his, like, 70-year-old mother, like, half-naked, <laughs> running lovely. around Asbury Park. Hmm. <laughs> I remember it's the one... Art. She, <laughs> she was... <laughs> she, was a, she was naked <laughs> on a table, balancing pots and pans on her so knees and hands fucking fetish you like or something or what the mind f- you there's kids here watching yeah, yeah. this and everybody's silent watching this film and i break out laughing so hard <laughs> i don't remember that part of the story that <laughs> i had the asshole <laughs> diana looked at me and was like brennan i i got up and left and i went down the hallway and, and you know when you like swallow your laughter oh and you can't God. stop laughing <laughs> And Jeremy followed me out because he started laughing. <laughs> they wanted to turn it off. It was so but awkward. But the guy kept saying, like, no, no, leave it. Like, they have to, like, like, screen those first before they... Right? Yeah, they, you don't know what's going to... It was nuts. He explained, like, this is art. This is my art. His his mother peed in a heart. bottle. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, yeah. His mother peed in a bottle. And what then the she was... On a street corner. And then she also... How was, is that... In a toilet, a toilet oh, subjective, thing. right? It is subjective. And drinking a forty, like <laughs> who are you to, to tell that guy that's not his art? <laughs> I didn't want to. See I don't want, well, in... I don't want to watch it either. But that if he wants to do it, that's none of my business. <laughs> that's the same thing as like art galleries. That I've was, seen yeah. like beautiful that was paintings art. and then a fucking toilet. <laughs> and like it's just a toilet you buy at yeah. a fucking plumbing. <laughs> that was store. Art how is it art? Like <laughs> that was our film festival experience. <laughs> Did you ever go back again? No, that was no. it. That was I actually one. saw at, at an art gallery, get this, a Frisbee glued to a dead turtle. <laughs> wow. Can you, can, does it fly? It no, wow. it's just a fucking dead turtle with a Frisbee on it. Wow. I don't, I don't know. What, I, that, how much did it I cost? Don't get, that's some of the shit I don't get about art. Like, oh, just... it's so organic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but original. if it makes sense if it makes sense to the artist, that's what they should be doing. I guess, yeah. It doesn't make sense to anybody else, though. So, like. And then does he get offended if nobody understands? Well, you know what what's interesting. Like you know what's interesting is to, like I'm sure there's at least one other person out there that that would make you sense. You know what, to. Kevin's like, right. Like the whole population. Before. Yeah, there's probably a, there's right. probably at least one. Right, there well, might be five. I saw another painting where there was a huge canvas and a little fucking red dot in the middle. <laughs> yeah, and people were that. crying. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't get it. It's that somebody traced a fucking dime, and painted it red, <laughs> on a really big fucking canvas, <laughs> and put nothing else on it but a red dot, like. Yeah. Well, everybody, like, yeah, I mean, everybody's brain kind of processes information slightly different. Especially with abstract art, so, you know? We can look at it and say, oh, a little kid just threw paint on a canvas. But some well, the brain look at it the and brain say, also, I know like, what he was feeling. Different people with their life experiences can see that symbolism differently. Yeah. yeah. So, like, if you've had specific life experiences, maybe. I'm just theorizing here. If you've had specific life experiences and you have a specific personality... That might, I guess. Well, if, for I instance, just reference something for you. Have you guys? I don't know the new season of Daredevil. The main, you know, villain has yet? this blank canvas that, throughout the whole <coughs> three seasons, it's it's his favorite canvas. He just stares at it. But he's blind, right? Or no? No, no, no. The the villain. Not, oh, okay, okay. So oh, that's dude. an example huh. right there. Well, I mean, I'm an artist. I draw. I paint. I you know, I yeah. sculpt. I just don't get it. Some, some of the stuff I just don't understand. Yeah. Which I mean, I don't. I guess nobody's going to get everything, but exactly. I, I don't yeah. know. It's just where I'm at. <laughs> when of... are we going to make a feature film, guys? Yeah. <laughs> when off. are we going to all three, <laughs> all four of us? Yeah, let's, let's yeah. get our schedules together. Right? I used to, I used to <laughs> like write, I used to write a lot of scripts. Now yeah. like slacked off a little bit, but uh, maybe this will yeah. jumpstart something. Right. Yeah, let's do it. Next <laughs> podcast will be will be like week one of, into shooting a feature. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. I don't know. What do you think? Let's do it. I still shoot all the time, though. I'm in the city twice a week. Well, Chris, yeah. after you got criticized by those 
the you know before you met us yeah when you met us you started filming we praised everything you did man every, i thought it was yeah. amazing Your editing man. it got better and better every other movie you I'm made a, i'm a decent editor but i mean i took some, your, a your video now it. that you did the trailer for that haunt in new jersey yeah. just got praised i mean uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's amazing just be, yeah but uh i don't know i don't like talking about myself really but it <laughs> it's a uh, it's all right what do you want me to say Brandon I suck and I wish your video that you made uh, what was it Vengeance? I want to see more stuff from you man, man no reason you have to see that movie we did yeah that was uh, what did we was that Avengers or no no that was the one before that there was an Wait, empty house that you yeah. brought furniture into. That was yes. Avengers. Yes. I remember that. Yep. That, that wasn't was Avengers? That was awesome. <laughs> no, no. Do you remember your no, dad had a, had a house that we... Yeah, uh, that's where that he was before Avengers. almost died. That was, that was huh? before Yeah, that, that night you got into your car wreck. Right? Yes. And you made sure your camera was the only thing that was okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it just happened to be okay. And then, I yeah, I felt, went out and filmed the wreck. That wasn't, yeah. that wasn't the ambulance was like laid out. The ambulance was like laid out. I was like, hold on. I got to get this shot. Tell us that experience, man. Yeah, what happened? I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. Oh, oh, next time. Oh, yeah. Really? Wait. Well, it's like a long. It's. A, right, we gotta do part two then. To do to do justice to it, it's gotta be like. <laughs> that was a a crazy. So yo, real quick, that wasn't alive. a vengeance. That wasn't a vengeance. No, no, it wasn't. What were we doing? That was, was the one before. That. It was just some. It was whatever movie project was before Avengers. Huh. It was. So cool. that was 04? or 05? That, I think that was five. Oh five. It was oh four. It was December. Was, was before January, right? I, th- I think it was oh four. Huh. It was called out. I remember that. It was like a yeah, month or two before oh five. You were getting the car shot, going pulling in or something. I think something like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, yes. now, did you or did you not get that Red Bull that was in the refrigerator that night? <laughs> I don't think so. Because if you did, you probably would never got in an accident. I might have. I used. To, I think I used. To I remember Red there was Bull one Red Bull in the refrigerator. I forgot who grabbed that. Actually, I'm not sure. I don't. That remember. shoot was like I nine know, number nine p.m. Wanna... to six a.m. Yeah, or something. Yeah. Some of those like martial arts you had in there, like in stairwells and stuff. You had all these cool no, elaborate things. Yeah. No. It's fucking awesome. Definitely. All right. I don't know, you guys want to keep going while he bounces, or I think it's up to you. We go for a little longer. You Sounds guys have good. time? or Yeah, I have time. All right, take care, guys. See you guys See next time. All right, Kev. Later. Oh, yeah. You have to wait till we're done now. <laughs> I mean, you can, I can leave it if you need it. <clears throat> this, is, this is what it'll be. Ready? It'll be a horror, gory, martial arts. action, <laughs> martial arts, paranormal, 360 <laughs> video. Yes! <laughs> We <laughs> are. <laughs> See you, Brett. Uh, Kevin. Uh, uh, it's too far. We're rolling, right? Yeah. yeah. That would be awesome. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I'm telling you, man. It would be. Damn. Put that camera in the, over here more so they you can, can see, see the big giant dinosaur. Yeah, that's great, Brandon. Put it so it's long way so they really can't see it. Awesome. <laughs> you deal with it. Doing a good job, buddy. There you go. <laughs> It's not even in the Fuck it. <laughs> it was in this shot, actually. Our head, the composition See? sucks, I had it right man. The first Look time. at how much headroom we have. <laughs> What's wrong with you? This is what I'd zoom. right there. Yeah, that looks good. So, yeah, I, I shot some, uh, like, a vlog with it. It was kind of an interesting process. Um, so I have to get these cables to get it connected, obviously, like an audio yeah, a converter yeah. to USB and then capture to the PC. And then mm. it was kind of cool doing it or even shooting with it because it's just completely different. How like, do you fucking know. hold those things? It's just right on your <laughs> shoulder. This was before us, right? 84. That this was what our uh, parents used. Yeah, it was like, yeah, kind of. It, it's actually the first mini uh, VHS tape camera. All right, so it was, it's still like a modern one. Not with the big fucking one. So then, <laughs> when this first came out, they're like, oh my God, it's so small. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my first camera, I had the big the tape. VCR, the VCR, right? actual the wow. VCR tape. You had wow. a VHS, yeah. So that's yeah. the one from Back to the Future. If, no. The one that Marty had. Exact okay. same one. Nice. That was like another reason why I really wanted Marty. to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, we got to go Back to the Future. 1.21 gigawatts. Hey, did you ever get those Back to the Future shoes? Nah, man. Did They're they so hard to get. Out? Did they ever come out? It's like they did come out, but Nobody it was a them. it was a raffle or something. You had to win it or whatever. Hmm. I donated. Win it. So they did like this thing where you donate, say, a dollar, and then you get a, a ticket for the raffle. And if you get chosen, then you get the, sh- the shoe. Hmm. But I didn't win, so. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Chris, what was your fit, your your... Your best video, you think, to date that you've Mine? done? Mine? Yes. Uh, they all suck, but... Oh, I know they all um, suck. What was the best Everyone seems to praise video? Relic. 
relic. There's really no, there's some talking, but everyone yelled at me to put that in the film festival. Bring me back. What was relic? You weren't in it. It was the one that with the kid uh, metal detecting yes. and he found okay. the Oh, is the that, gun, and yeah. then all of a sudden the scene appeared of what happened, of how the gun got there, and uh, yeah, it was just just a little idea I had. I think it was a dream I had. Um, I yeah, remember the metal detecting company reached out to you, right? Yes, they. I <laughs> put them in the credits, and I actually tagged them, <clears throat> and then they contacted me, and I got scared. So I'm like, oh, shit, I'm gonna get sued now because I didn't <laughs> ask them, and they were really nice. They sent me uh, a letter. They said. Uh, they sent me a catalog of their book, and they're like, uh, "We really appreciate you using our name in our in your movie." Awesome. And uh, here's a catalog. Pick up to three hundred dollars worth of stuff you want on us. I'm like, "Holy shit!" Nice. So like all this cool that's metal cool. detecting stuff. And uh, yeah, that's. I never knew they reached out to you like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, th- yeah, they reached out to me like a week later. Can you still send it to a film festival? Yeah, I mean, the kid that I use is fucking like taller than me. It's like, <laughs> how wait, how, how long ago was that? Do you, do you remember? Like, Fucking six years ago. Oh wow, Larry was in it. Matt. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what was the one you were working on? I think I did some camera for it. I think it was Larry was in it. We're doing a car chase. Well, or no, that was Bible Belt. That wasn't mine. I was just I was camera B operator. Oh, uh, okay. that's out. That's that's, that's a big, out. That's a feature movie. Oh wow, you never saw it. I'm just 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 jogging my memory now. I'll send I it think to you. that does sound familiar. I think that first scene was on a train, and then um, I don't. Yeah, I don't fight. think I ever saw. I it. actually was in it because one of the actors couldn't come, so I ended up giving the camera over to um, Russell, and I had to play some. I put a contact in one of my eyes, and I had like a leather jacket and a gun, and I was some fucking villain. I forgot what the hell the name was, but huh. Yeah, um, a lot of times that happened. I this I, that happened another time, which just really pissed me off because the first IMDb I ever got, I here I am a camera operator and a DP, and I've been doing it for years, and then the actor didn't show up, so Russell asked me to just play the actor, so I did, and he won this huge award for film festival, and then they had me down as an actor, and I'm like. Oh man. <laughs> oh man! So actor credit. I'm like, no, uh, I'm a DP. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Wait, was this the movie where it's something in like a garage? No, that was called Big Mouth. Big Mouth. Okay. Yeah, that was called. Yeah, that was Big Mouth. And then the one that we did, all us with Russell, was Bible Belt. You were in that. Yeah. He was in. I yep. was in uh, uh, City of Angels. Is that what it was? No, it was but. That was no, the, yes, City of Angels. I'm City sorry. City of Angels. That's that what you was, did too. City of Angels. Okay. That was That's so the much scene. fun filming that, man. Uh yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh yeah, the garage. Yeah, that's yeah, City that of was Angels was that. Yeah. Bible Belt was another one. It was a different one. Um I thought you were in that too, no, but I guess no, not. No, I was in it now. Um Is this something we could see online? Like I could plug it yeah, in the description. Yeah, I, I think it's under either Indie Mogul or Hey Killer Films. Okay. One of those, I believe. That's because they changed names right in the middle when he was making those. So I'm not yeah. sure which one is what. But also, you were in another one uh, when I was working with Indie Mogul a lot. Uh, you were in the Tommy Gun one. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, that, uh, that's awesome. I'm, that was kind of cool being in that. Yeah, that it was, was split second, but yeah, those guys are really awesome. Uh, they, they're huge now. They have a show on uh, cable. Huh. Wow. Uh, the Indie Mogul channel. No, they actually they left Indie Mogul. I mean, the people that were behind the yeah, Indie Mogul Eric channel. And, yeah, Eric Beck, I think his name was. Huh. Something like that. And, uh, um, yeah, I forgot their names. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> i never seen that one. Yeah, it's the, the quality is one? so bad on it, but it was because it's so old, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I get shot by a Tommy gun, and I'm just like, duh, 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 and there's like blood on my shirt. Yeah. But, uh, old school. You shot that, right? I did. Or you uh, I was the camera. camera A operator on that one. Yeah. Hey Jeremy, what movie was it <laughs> that you had to get um like you just got thrown against like a table or something? <laughs> and we did about fifty takes of your I, reaction getting hurt. Dude, I'm the worst what, actor. Like and then when it comes to Kevin, he wants it so perfect. Like one dude. of them must have been like okay, but you have to keep doing it. This keep was doing. so funny, man. Jeremy yeah. to the point at like take sixty, he was just like <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, your favorite 
Your favorite <laughs> acting to me was when we did the ghost hunting movie when you're like, yeah, let's get some ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> My acting is so horrible, man. <laughs> <That was great. laughs> we got to get some ghosts. <laughs> Woo! We saw that trailer. We thought that was like. Yeah, dude. That was like, the point. The point, I think it yeah. was called. Yeah, I think so. I don't remember. <laughs> we thought that was like. We, we got to dig up Hollywood all these fucking qualities. I know. I wanted to bring so we could react to it, the, the fence one, but I literally forgot it. That was the last <laughs> don't thing. Don't whiz on the electric fence. <laughs> yes. I, uh, well, explain the, what happened in that. So, do you know what year that was? So that was back when I had hair and I didn't wear hats all the time. So <laughs> yeah, you did have hair. <laughs> yeah, long I literally um, had an afro. That yeah. was like 2008. Maybe, oh, yeah. Maybe 2007. It looks like, like we that. just came back from the beach. So it was like me and Brandon starring in it, and you shot you it. You guys were surfing, I think. Yeah, <laughs> and he was like, "Yo, you want to shoot a movie?" We're like, all right, whatever, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think the story was something like I was cheating on your My sister, sister or yeah. something yeah. Like that. yeah. that's what it was <laughs> that's how it ended but we did some random stupid funny stuff like in the meantime before that was like talked about but I, what <laughs> you guys superpowers the conflict was i pissed on this fence and i got superpowers yeah yeah and then somehow you did you have super oh you grabbed onto me as you were getting yeah, electrocuted so we wait so you were pissing yeah. And then got electrocuted and then grabbed that onto me. Why? That's funny. Yeah, I, I was. I think I learned how to use, do some stupid effect. Yeah, I wanted like, to somehow so incorporate just, it into some fucking storyline. Yeah, yeah. But it was funny as hell because then you started like doing some Dragon Balls yeah. and stuff. And, and then there was a random rabbit in the in the field just staring at me. <laughs> and then at the end, I think I walked up and your sister came to me. I'm like, oh, cool. Let's go out. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I totally left that's you guys. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's too funny, man. That was so That would have been awesome. So much play. fun, though. Just, yeah, it was even fun. Even the video was stupid. It was so much fun I doing I just, it. I always wanted to edit all the time. Edit, edit. And now I, I fucking hate it. I sub <laughs> yeah. all my editing out now. Do you, do you like just all film, like just shooting now? Or Yeah. I, I What I do now is usually usually twice a week I go to the city, mainly Jersey City. And I go, I, I just shoot. Um, I dump my cards if I'm using my camera or I go and there's a camera ready for me. I go, mm -hmm. I shoot, and I leave. And I don't even know where half the footage goes. I've seen <laughs> my stuff on a car channel. I, I'm sorry, a car commercial once. Oh wow! Um, I seen it on G4 <laughs> channel. Uh, I don't even know where the hell it should go. So it's just you go there, you shoot. I get paid. I, yeah, I go there, I get paid, and I leave. And it's you know I don't have to worry about editing or <laughs> file transfers or all that shit. Yeah. Are you gonna do any more VR horror? I want to, man. I but just saw the last. The which one was it? Wheelchair. It's about or? six million views. Oh, the the yeah. Wow. <clears throat> the first one. <laughs> yeah. Is that the one Lock that was here doors. in this house? Yeah, you were in it. Right. Oh, well, no, you I, weren't in it. I you were helping with scenes, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should do something where you go like in a paranormal thing, and like it was like Penhurst Asylum. I asked if you can just set your camera up all night and let it. I mean, will they roll all night? You think? Or? It no. Can you link? I mean, them to the a SD power card. Supply? I could do that. The power supply, but the SD card would run out eventually. Fuck, it yeah. takes a lot of. It yeah. probably overheat too. I was yeah. gonna say you should do something where people can look for their own ghosts. <laughs> you know, just leave it, let it go. Like, yeah, some IR lights that would be cool. Wear the headset. Yeah. <laughs> Little change of subject. Where do you think technology and filmmaking is going? Like, where do you think it's going to go? To me, how far? Like from this to what we have now. To I don't think people give a shit anymore because I mean, you you scroll through Instagram and you see all those effects that people are doing now. Yeah. And it used to take hours to keyframe yeah. all that shit, and everything is so <laughs> quick, and uh, it's just too easy. Where it's not impressing people anymore. It's really people aren't impressed by everything. To me, I I think people are more wrapped up in their phones and their Instagram and how many likes they get and that's their whole view in their you know in the world now is you know these people that I don't know how I understand like, that but what do you think like Hollywood like where is filmmaking going like how filmmaking is going to all comic books be? all comic book movies <laughs> book movies. No, no, I'm dead serious. All comic book movies. That, I mean, like technology. You know, with like technology. What, like, like, are you saying like, like camera wise? Yes. Or, like, is like VR going to be like bigger or like like, like something when we like that? Like, go to the theater in 50 years from now. What is it going to be like? I think? think the next I've heard this is going to be the uh, what is it where you can um, 4D. 
4D. Is that 4D where you can see it, smell it, touch it? Yeah. Theaters are going to do, yeah, you know, most theaters do the vibrational okay. interactive seats. There's yeah. some places smells. that have that though, right? Like yeah, I think that's going something. to be the next thing. And then um, I, I think they're going to get rid of actors altogether in like 20, 30 years and just use CGI people. Really? They don't have to pay them anymore. That's true. And if they die, they can license their fucking image to New Line or something. You know? Yeah. So with uh, we'll see what they're doing. Carrie, what's her name? Carrie from Star Wars. Is that her, her name? Yeah, Carrie Fisher. CG, yeah, yeah, Carrie yeah. Fisher. Yeah. So she was CGI. I met her. She was awesome. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And her dog. <laughs> she was at Monster Mania. Monster with her Mania. Dog. Yeah. Met her. <laughs> met uh, Chewbacca. Peter Mayhew. That's awesome. Uh, Love that place. I mean, all those. I just met the It Kids uh, <laughs> last month. A little kid that says, uh, you'll float too. You'll float too. <laughs> Georgie, little Georgie. <laughs> like a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> pop, 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 pop. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> oh, man. I always wanted to make the scariest mm. horror movie. In my mind, when I was a little kid, I, would just, I just wanted to make the scariest horror movie. You always wanted to do clowns. You Anything. Love doing clowns. I just want to scare the crap out of the audience. And I, <laughs> to this day, I, it's my goal. I'm eventually going to do... I don't care if it's another homemade movie <laughs> and post it on YouTube, but I just want to, my goal is to scare the crap out of people. You know what scares me? I mean, I've, I've shot movies, horror movies. I make them and all that stuff. But what scares me is watching the daredevil people go out there on their little hoverboards to like the edge of buildings and shit. Like that, that oh, makes your yeah. asshole pucker. Man. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like seriously, they climb up on the. I just like, I watched just, a video shit. of somebody jumping over a building onto another narrow edge, looking down. What is that wrong with these people? Shit. I mean, I'm not afraid of heights or anything, but that is well, some psychotic. Dude, some guy just died actually uh, doing yeah. a music video. Really? He was going on to the side of the. Uh, he was walking out on the wing of a plane, like a Cessna. It was oh, really? part of the music video, and then he was supposed to like jump off of it, off the wing, and then you know parachute. Yeah. But um, apparently, th- while he was on the side of the wing, the plane started to nosedive, and then it, I guess, it got too low, and then the dude had to jump for some reason, and I guess couldn't pull his chute in wow. time, and then smack the ground. Wow. Plane kept going, I believe, wow. but that dude, yeah. I thought you were talking about the Chinese guy that was fell off the side of the building. I saw that one. His, I guess he, his arms or fingers got Oh, tired. I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I saw that I, yeah, one. Was that like a year that. ago or something? Yeah. Where's something like that. Yeah. That was nuts. <laughs> That's Crazy. what scares me. <laughs> that <laughs> honestly, the real life. Fear that of... and internal illness, like brain cancer and bone cancer, like that's the shit that scares I me mean, in real life. That like, can be incorporated in a movie. I mean, you got what? Yeah. Zombies are like that, right? You get like an illness inside internally, and then you. Yeah. yeah. The outbreak. That was a good. One. I'm just so like you know the whole VR thing is still really cool, but if you could actually feel as if you were in these experiences, because you still always remember you have this headset on, um, yeah. But to more immerse yourself in some of these things, like a movie or so, whatnot, I guess that's where technology is going to go. It could like video games, like the Resident Evil game. I don't know if you guys played it for the PSVR. Yeah. I saw you online with that. <clears throat> that game scared me so much. Like it actually feels like something's gonna like hit you or like attack <laughs> you or eat you yeah we have that the ht uh htc vive, vive yeah it's a vive or vive i can never... i think it's vive vive that's right. what I, yeah. so i think in the far future i think movies are gonna be vr i think you're gonna put on and then the headsets are not gonna be as bulky as they are now obviously they're gonna get tinier and yeah. tinier and... it'd be cool if they can just put some shit on your fucking head and you don't gonna put anything on your face yeah right and it like it, it just overlays on your eyes yeah like, something just takes over your brain gets projected Pretty, yeah, I think that's where it's going to go. I mean, another thing is like AR too, where, you know, an experience can be um, uh, projected in this room in a way. So you have these glasses that can overlay images or yes. characters in this room. So you could sort of watch a scene or, um, you know, these walls can be completely changed to like yeah. a, a hotel room or like. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. That's almost like that movie, old movie 13th Ghost, how uh, you put glasses on and you can see ghosts with these glasses, you know? <laughs> so that, that exists cool. now. They have that. The, like the well, that movie and that whatnot. you and I went to go see, uh, Player One. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. How crazy was that? That is like, nuts. I can yeah. picture that happening. You know, yeah. a world inside a virtual reality. Well, they do have those can... running platforms now. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Rosie wants one, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Your whole income is, like, virtual. Yeah, you, know? you make it in there. <laughs> yeah. Like, do whatever yeah. you want. I can imagine that. 
That'd be cool if that's how everyone went to work. They just went into another room in their house and walked into some <laughs> fake fucking office building. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that would it would have to be a place where, uh, or that could <clears throat> eventually exist if the place that we currently live in real life sucks or like it's just so bad that you have to escape. You know, it's it. getting to that point, man. People, nobody looks around anymore. Every time you go to like the Niagara Falls, you just they just everyone pulls out their fucking phone. <laughs> Takes a picture of it and then walks away. Never actually looks at it. It's always through their little fucking screen. You know, and then it's immediately posted yeah. to Instagram and they walk away to the next thing. But they don't actually, like, experience it. Like, I like going places, taking my shoes off, putting my feet on the ground. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just like being in the environment. Present in that uh, time. Yeah. yeah I, like, every time I go away on vacation, I leave my phone off the whole week. Oh. <laughs> Here's my phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what I'm fucking saying. <laughs> I know I sound kind of negative. I know and stuff, you. I know I'm you get. I know old as definitely, shit. definitely going to these places, living the experience of actual being there, smelling mm-hmm. the air, and seeing this thing is amazing. And it's one thing, but now they got this VR where like Jeremy goes to these places and films these beautiful places, and it feels like you're there also. Yeah. I mean, the only limitation, like with 360 videos, that you can't. Like the way I do it is you can't physically move around. You're just kind of watching yeah. a scene that's unfolding or something. I saw one guy in the city. I stopped and I talked to him. He wears a backpack. Mm-hmm. And it. I guess it had. It looked like it had a gimbal on it. Um, something weird. It looked like a gimbal. And he would walk around the city, walk around conventions, he said. Um, and so you're walking. You know, I mean, Even though you can't take the steps personally, but... So that you might want to start doing that, like walking around at these places or go like you just start going in the caves. You ever do that? No. Go what to caves? Like Pennsylvania, like Crystal Cave or something. Where's that cave we were supposed to go to? Remember that? Was that? That might have been that place. Uh, Crystal yeah. Cave. Maybe There's, that was uh, it. Rosie and I usually every month, Rosie and I takes a day trip out yeah. and find new places and stuff. Uh, there's a lot in Pennsylvania, though. A lot of caves. Yeah, so I think we talked a lot about uh, how we where we started began out, yeah. yeah, where this could go in the future. Yeah, hopefully we could make a feature film one day or do something fun. I don't know, short oh, film man. would be fun. There was a movie that I wrote for you guys that I never ended up fucking doing. So maybe pull that script out. Maybe we could. Uh, we got the camera, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would really like though, man, to definitely eventually do something together. Like you said, even if it's a f- if it's a short. Yeah, yeah. I would like to. Even if it's five film, minutes, I would or like, like to go to some... a film festival. Not the one that you and I went to. I don't want to see the no. guy filming his mom again. But, definitely not. No, but I would like to see how our art combined would, how far that would go. Definitely. It's one funny. Day. I found that file a few days ago. It says Brandon Jeremy. I'm like, what the fuck is this? It was actually a movie I wrote for you guys. Save it, man. We got to do it. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for stopping by and checking out the Creative Basement podcast. This is the fourth episode. I uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. Yep. Chris, Brandon. All right. Kevin, thanks. (laughs) Bye, Kev. All right, I'll see you guys on the next podcast. All right, definitely. Later. Later.